Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today what we're going to tackle are the Shore Troopers from Rogue One. These guys appeared very briefly on Scarif during the fight for the plans for the Death Star and I love the design of them. They are probably one of my favorite things to come out of Rogue One, which had a bunch of really cool design options in there. Uh, but the Coastal Defense Troopers or Shore Troopers were just the coolest by far. Now this fella here, he is a 3D print from Darkfire Designs, and I'll make sure that there is the link to those in the description. You can also pick up physical prints from them too. And as well, there is a discount code in there. If you go ahead and use Sonic Sledge, you'll get 10% off of any purchases you make, which, cool. As my mum used to say, beats a hard kick in the face. Anyhow, <laughs> all the paints for this one will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. So once your miniature is all cleaned up and assembled, the first thing to do is to prime him. Now this fella, I've used Wraithbone from Citadel. Honestly, anything light will work here. We're not really going to use the Wraithbone as a base for anything specific. So white or a light gray will still do the job here. Even something like Skeleton Bone from the Army Painter, it doesn't matter too much, as long as it's nice and light. Now the first color we're going to start with is going to be black. We are going to paint the bodysuit and a few of the other black details at this point, starting from the lowest layer on the miniature. But it occurs to me, something that I actually really like about these miniatures, and I quite forgot until the last moment, is that even the single piece figures come with their heads separate so that you would glue those on in whatever direction you want them looking. Uh, it would have made it a great deal easier to paint the bodysuit. Oh well, <laughs> something to bear in mind when you do come to your own, if you want to make it a little bit easier, leave the heads off. Uh, just dab them onto a little bit of toothpick or something, and you can paint the helmet separately. Glue them on last. But with a little bit of Vallejo Black, I have watered this down just enough that it will flow freely. And I am probably going to make a dreadful mess getting up under here to reach that uh, next section. I'm not too worried though. Any other black details? Fill them in now. Now, the one thing that I am going to paint differently, which would look black, is going to be the kama that he's wearing, the skirt thing on the back. Uh, we're going to paint that a slightly different shade later on. So, like I mentioned, don't worry if you do go a little overboard and you end up hitting some of the armor, because we are going to paint that later. I didn't do too badly. You can see there are a few bits that I have overdone it, but uh, no, it's not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. Now what I'm going to move on to is painting his trousers. Next layer up. For this, I'm going to use Katachan Flesh. This is a nice warm brown. I think if you look at uh, production stills from the movie, this is a pretty close match. You'll see we do get a little bit of the primer showing through. So once you've applied this, let it dry, and then come back to give it a second coat. Now that's a nice medium brown without being too orange. But speaking of slightly more orange brown, I have here Mournfang brown. And we're going to paint in his boots. And if you were painting in a regular trooper, this would also be the color I would use to paint in the uh, leather ammunition gear that they're carrying. Now I read on Wikipedia that apparently the squad leaders and officers don't have the thigh plates of their armor and they don't carry the ammunition because they need to be able to move around quicker and more effectively, which Sounds like some Office of Mischief to me, but what do, what do I know? <laughs> and then we'll flip him around to start applying some Evil Sun Scarlet to the red band on his right arm. Now this is much brighter than it's going to be once we're finished. And that's actually going to make it a little bit easier to work with later on. And as well, one of the wonderful things about these sculpts is that they have the little marking on the helmet actually sculpted as a slightly recessed detail. So I am just going to blop, fill that with red. Bit of a mess now. But we're at last going to turn to the armor color. For this, I'm going to use Ushapti Bone. And we're going to get in carefully and start applying this to tidy up some areas. But we're going to lay this down as the main armor color pretty much everywhere. So you'll find over our nice light primer, this will cover very well. But any areas that you need to, like for example, you'll see up on his chest here that a little bit of black splash is still th showing through. So 
Oh well, we'll come back once this first coat is dried and finish off by applying a second anywhere we need to. Now there's no getting around it, that is the time consuming part. Everything else has been really quick so far, but that stage took me about half an hour. It's probably a good reason to try a skeleton bone as your primer, because that'll be more of a clean up stage then. What I've got now is Hoeth Blue, and we're going to use this to paint in the uh, markings. Obviously if you're painting a line trooper, then don't apply this. I'm going to paint in about half of the shoulder pads, trying to keep a straight line as much as possible. But remembering, of course, if I do make a mistake, I've still got my Shapti bone to cover back over with. Same with the stripe across the chest. You want about a third of these bars. That might be closer to half, but whatever. Now on his right arm, our left, I've gone back with a little bit of the Ushabti bone to tidy up and straighten out that shoulder pad. But on his left arm, our right now, <laughs> I haven't because we've still got the white and black stripes to paint. So I'm turning here to Korax white to paint in the white stripe. Now I tend to find it easiest to move the miniature in such a way that I can just move my brush one direction over and over again until I get a straight line. So starting up on the brim, I guess, there. And now we can start bulking out this line a little bit. And then with the white in place, we can paint the two black stripes. It's a little bit involved this stage, but it is going to look cool once it's finished. Remember, of course, that any mistakes we can tidy up as we go with the previous colors. Now, since a few of you have mentioned you do like seeing that I do make mistakes, you know, there it is, I'm going to have to tidy this up. So back to my white, and I'll use a little bit of a shafty bone again on the lower edges. Now I did just spot one cool bit of marking on the front of the armor here. So I painted in a little white triangle, a rectangle rather, using the same uh, methods as before. What I have now is some flash gets yellow, and I'm going to paint in very carefully, little yellow stripes either side of this funny shape triangle. Very funny shape triangle. Uh, as well, I'm going to use this, or I would use this as the little yellow dots um, on the bar of the arm here. Uh, but this fella, he's, he's covering where it would be. But if you have got a fella who's got an exposed section on his arm there, that would be where I'd use this yellow. Now getting those markings on is an awful lot of faff, but it is just going to be for your squad leaders and any officers, so I think it's worth making them stand out, make them really cool. What I'm going to turn to now is black grey. Now this is a Vallejo colour. If you want to stick to Citadel like I have done for the most part, you could use here Corvus Black, but I think you'll see the coverage here is worth swapping over. So let's cover this in now. I'm glad at this stage that I caught that more of his undersuit was black than I had actually painted, but shh, just between you and I. What I'm going to do now is to shade him, and for this I'm actually going to turn to the Army Painter's Soft Tone. Uh, you could use possibly the new Agrax Earthshade here, um, I haven't really experimented with it, but what I do know is how this is going to work. So I've put about 10 drops of uh, Soft Tone into a little well here on a palette, and I'm going to add just one and two brushfuls of water just to change how this flows. I want it to maintain most of the funny gloopiness that the uh, Army Painter washes have, but flow just a little bit more smoothly. Then with my brush loaded up, let's apply this over the entire miniature. You'll see it collects, it's got a funny gloopy texture, it's the only way I can really think to explain it. But we're going to go around everything. Lay down a real quick layer of this. Now you want to get that on quite quickly, because what you can do then is with a smaller brush, which is just a little damp, is you can suck out some of the excess from the recesses, and as well you can even use it to pull away some from the center of these armor panels. 
And once this had some time to dry, this is what you'll have. And I'm always really pleased with how soft tone dries. It's not as yellow as it looks going on, so keep the faith, and you do want to apply it everywhere. It's got a nice richness over that black grey that I really like. But from here, I am going to do a little bit more. I do want to do some highlights and some little extra bits and pieces, but that's a finished miniature. You know, we can play with that quite happily. So to demonstrate what I mean by that, I'm going to go ahead and base him now. Now this is the Vallejo uh, texture, what is it called? Diorama effect stuff. Uh, and I'm just going to bucket this straight on with the most scrankly old brush I can find. Now it's important that this stuff does have plenty of time to dry. If you come back and try and dry brush it while it isn't thoroughly dry, it has a kind of spongy texture, and you're going to lift some of it away, which will not look good. What I'm doing now is just going to quickly dry brush it with a little bit of Tyrant Skull. You can also use Dark Sand from Vallejo if you fancy. And now I'm going to apply a little bit of Brown Sand from Vallejo around the rim. Now here you could use Zandri Dust or XV88, anything which is a little bit darker than the sand you've put on top will work quite well. Now even with such a simple base, that's a miniature I'd quite happily put on the table. But like I said, let's take it a little bit further. So the first thing I'm going to do is brighten up a couple of sections where the shade has made them a little darker than I might like, and that's going to start with the white. First off, I'm going to turn straight to White Scar, and very carefully paint over the white stripe in the center. Then as well as the shoulder pad, that little marking on his chest, I've done that too. Now if you do nothing else, that is one thing I would recommend is going to really improve the look. I'm going to do the same thing here with Hoeth Blue again. So picking one of the shoulder pads, and I'm going to paint in most of the flat areas, and leave the shaded blue in the recess. Now that brightens up the blue just a little, and reintroduces some of that richness of color. You can go ahead and do the same thing with the Ushabti bone all over the armor if you want to, but I'd recommend probably not worth it. Uh, in particular, the way that these guys look is that the markings are painted over the top of the armor, where the armor looks more as though it's cast in that bone. So I figure you can save yourself that effort. I'll move on now and have Gorthal Brown. What I'm going to do is just a few little highlights on the trousers. So moving carefully, let's just pick a few of the creases to accentuate these folds. Now I'm going to use some Storm Vermin fur and do the same thing on the black. Well, the black cloth, anyhow. What I'd suggest is you can also use here Dawnstone, because that one's a little more commonly in people's collections, but I think this little bit of almost natural warmth that Storm Vermin fur has, is going to look better on this cloth. If you want to add some highlights to the other areas of black, what I've got here is Dark Reaper, which is really quite a dark blue. This works really well as sort of mechanical or rubberized sort of blue tint to your black. So I'm going to use this to highlight his knuckles, basically like I would skin. And then our final black highlight will be a dry brush. I've got a tiny bit of Necron compound and a scraggly old brush. I'm just going to lightly catch the edges of his blaster. If you put too much of this on or you don't like how it looks, once this has had a chance to dry and settle, you can just hit it with Null Oil or something. Now we're really on to the home stretch, where this is as far as you might want to take it, but let's do it just because it'll be fun. Now, I'm not going to do very many highlights with this. What I want to do is pick out just some extreme edges on the armor. Front plates, big flat areas are going to be what benefits from this the most. Now, in my case, I started really having fun with that, and I've probably done a little bit more than I would ordinarily. If you were in a rush, of course, skip it, but if you're in a rush, you're probably not going this far anyway. What we'll move on to now is really the final stage, and that's going to be some armor chipping. What I've done is I've put in some Rhinox hide with a tiny wee dot of black. The exact proportions don't matter too much, uh, maybe four to one, you know, brown to black. What I'm going to do is with a nice fine brush, just pick a couple of areas, 
where it is likely we'd see some armor chipping. So instead of painting perfect straight lines, we're going to get little rough edged dibbly dibbly dibblies. And here you're aiming for anywhere which would see a lot of impact. So along the front here, just a little bit, and then dibbly 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 with a fine brush, just enough to get a bit of scratching and some impact. Try not to go too far with this, and you can also use it to cross into the blue to make this fit together a little more. But yeah, as much of this as you want to add, away you go. Now it is very easy to go overboard with that, but I don't think you can really do too much of it. Personally, I think it looks pretty cool. What I've got now is, this is the last stage I want to add. This is a little bit of sand. Uh, this is a pigment from Vallejo, and I'm just mixing in with a tiny drop of water. Now if I put this on my palette here, this is probably a little bit easier to see. See, it's quite scungy. All I'm going to do is just stipple this fairly roughly onto his legs. And uh, I might need to mix up a little bit more of that, actually. But by making this with water, we can apply it very easily, and it will then stick where we leave it. Uh, now it's important, once we have applied this, that uh, as it dries, it's going to turn back to essentially sand. Uh, so we are going to need to varnish this. Now that's going to look grimy, like properly messy. So grab yourself a stiff old brush, something which is dry, and you can work out most of this, especially on your flatter areas, to spend a few seconds buffing that away. Whereas by comparison, on your armor, you want to leave a little bit more of this in place. So remove as much of this as you like. And anywhere that you want to get rid of it more or less entirely, what you can do is get a wet brush and just feather these edges a little bit. Now you can play around with taking that off in layers. And it's a bit of fun. You know, it is really something I don't do very often. But again, we're in the realm of enjoying painting here. As well, once we varnish it, a lot of that effect is going to dull down quite a bit. So have a play with it, because I do recommend it's worth experimenting. Anyhow, let's take him outside. I am going to matte varnish him, and let's get a look at what he looks like when he's all finished. And there at last, our tropical trooper, our shore trooper sergeant, is complete. And I really had a lot of fun doing this guy. They are my favorites, like I said, so having the chance to print something out and paint something as a, a one-off, I'm actually really looking forward to painting up a bunch more of these guys. Now, full disclosure, once I applied the varnish, the uh, powders that I'd used did pretty much disappear, so I've come back with a little more water and some fresh powder. Uh, honestly, being able to mix up just a paste of weathering powder, like I said, worth having a play with. So, as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Train Boy, Rod, and Jimmy. Your support really means the world, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free, drop them in the old comment box below. My Instagram and Twitter are both linked there. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.